A queue is a dynamic data structure in which items join at the back and leave from the front. Think of a line of people waiting to be fed at a school canteen. The person at the front of the queue will be served first and the person at the back will be served last. It's a dynamic data structure because the amount of data it contains can increase and decrease while it's in use. A queue can be implemented as a linear queue. This could involve an array variable. More specifically, a dynamic array, one with no fixed size. This queue has some data in it, and we also have a system of pointers. A pointer to indicate the front of the queue, and another pointer to indicate the next free space. Taking data from the queue is known as dequeuing, and this simply means taking data from the position given by the front pointer and then incrementing the front pointer to indicate the new front of the queue. If we dequeue again, it's the same. Take data from the position given by the front pointer and then increment that pointer. Adding data to a queue is known as enqueuing. And this simply means putting data at the position given by next free. Of course, we then need to increment next free. And again, enqueuing data at the position of next free and incrementing next free. Implementing a linear queue with a dynamic array has its advantages. It's easy to do. However, when we take data from the queue, we're not actually removing it from the array. All we're doing is incrementing the front pointer. So the memory is never actually freed up. Now this is fine if you've got plenty of memory, but in a busy queue, it may end up working its way through the memory and use up an awful lot without actually containing much data. An alternative approach then is to use a static array. This time we've got a slightly different system of pointers. We have one to indicate the front and another to indicate the rear. We also have a variable to keep count of the number of items in the queue. So when we dequeue this time, we take data from the position given by front, increment front like we did before, and then update the value of the number in the queue. When we enqueue data, this means incrementing the value of the rear pointer and placing data at that position. And once again, we update the number of items in the queue. If we enqueue again, it's the same. Increment the rear pointer, place the data at that position, and update the number of items in the queue. Now there's going to come a point where we can't add any more at the back. We can continue to dequeue data, But if we attempt to put some more at the back, we're not going to be able to do this unless we first shuffle things along to create more space. Now this is all well and good, but if you think about it, with a big queue, that's a very expensive operation in terms of processing. Not ideal. To the rescue comes the circular queue. The circular queue uses the same system of pointers we've just seen, one for the front and one for the rear. And we also have a variable to keep count of the number of items in the queue. When we want to enqueue new data, we increment the rear pointer and we place the data there. Dequeuing data means taking it from the front and then incrementing the front pointer, just as we've seen before. But this time, if we want to enqueue new data, and the rear pointer has reached its maximum, all we need to do is redefine the rear of the queue as the first element of the array. You can see then why it's called a circular queue. There's going to come a point where the queue is full. And if we try to enqueue more data, the number of items in the queue will match the number of items allowed by the size of the array. So we have to report that the queue is full. But of course, we can still continue to dequeue data. And it's worth noticing what happens to the front pointer as we continue to do so.
you can see now that the front pointer has reached 6, we need to redefine the front pointer as 1. So there you have it, the circular queue. Let's take a look at the pseudocode for a circular queue. First, I've declared some variables, the main one being an array variable. In this case, I've used a static array, and it's one-based. In other words, the elements are numbered from 1 to 6. I have a variable to indicate the position of the front of the queue, another to indicate the position of the rear, and then finally, a variable to keep count of the number of items in the queue. Here's my NQ operation, in other words, to add new items to the queue. The first thing we do is check to see if the number of items in the queue is 6, in which case the queue is full and we output accordingly. If not, then we need to check to see if the rear is 6, and if so, it'll be redefined as 1. Otherwise, it's just a simple matter of incrementing the rear and then placing our new data item at the appropriate position in the array. This is our DQ operation, to take items from the front of the queue. The first thing we do is check to see if the queue is empty, and if it isn't, we can then copy our item straight from the front position of the queue and decrement the number of items in the queue. Now we need to make a quick check to see if the front of the queue is the final element of the array, and if so, we'll need to redefine the front as element number one. Otherwise, it's a simple matter of incrementing the front pointer. To summarise then, a queue is a dynamic data structure. Its contents may be changing all the time while it's in use. New items are added to the rear, we say they're enqueued, and items leave from the front, we say they're dequeued. A queue is a first-in, first-out data structure. We say it's a FIFO data structure. A queue can be linear or circular. A queue is an abstract data type. Now, in the examples we've seen, the data was actually stored inside an array variable, but this needn't be the case. The data could be stored, for example, in a text file or a database table. What's important is that it is notionally a queue, and items leave from the front and they join from the back. Queues have all kinds of uses in the field of computing. The operating system makes use of queues in process scheduling. Queues are used as buffers, for example the keyboard buffer when you're typing. Queues are also used to spool print output. And these are just a few examples. Programmers can use queues in all kinds of scenarios.